Well, welcome to this, my 114th LinkedIn Live show. And I'm taking a traditional uh, look that I take every every year at the year ahead. So we're going to be talking about 2023 and what's coming for public sector tenders. Well, 2022 has been quite the year, hasn't it? It's been the year when the term VUCA has really come into its own. The acronym VUCA has been around since the 1980s. It describes a world or a system which is volatile, uncertain, complex and ambiguous. And doesn't that now really provide a great definition of the sort of systems that we all work and live within? The UK economy has suffered a couple of seismic shocks this year. There's been the war in the Ukraine with its effect on energy prices and supply chains. And also there's been the UK's political instability with three prime ministers, four chancellors of the Exchequer, all in 2022. And the government says September fiscal event which led to severe corrections in the economy and a steep hike in interest rates, which affects both businesses and also the public sector and um, domestic uh, customers as well, affects all of us. Against this background, there's also been other uh, emergencies. There's the climate emergency. Uh, 2022 has been the UK's hottest year on record. In fact, I was in London at sort of 40 plus degrees in July. Uh, so experienced some of that myself uh, as I was in, in a car that was on a road going between London and Cambridgeshire and the road was actually melting. So really uh, we're seeing dramatic uh, impacts of, of climate change. Globally as well, the climate emergency, well, that's having effects on food security, it's also having effects on, on, on migration as people look to move away um, from areas that, you know, have been severely impacted by the climate. And COVID-19 is still around as well. So bidders are being required to uh, adopt uh, both macro views, taking a look at the world and the country, the situation that they are going to be delivering their contracts within, but also more micro views as well, and just how that's impacting the organisation that they're bidding to, but also their own organisation. And particularly because people are a big part of the delivery of most contracts, then how are they going to kind of resource them as well? So I'm going to just pose a question. What are the, the buyers, the clients, um, and therefore the bidders, the, the suppliers, the contractors, what are they likely to be focused on in 2023 that will need to be taken account of within your bids to be successful? Well, today I'm just going to talk about 10 key bid trends. So the first one is value for money. So bid trend number one, value for money. So bids that can demonstrate cost-effective delivery, for example, by providing efficiencies or savings or added value, well, they are likely to be well-received by clients many of whom will be facing financial cuts, quite severe ones as well, just to even keep the lights on. If we think about the severe hikes in energy costs, but also there's increased labour costs, increased costs of many things, and sometimes not necessarily the uh, required increase in their budgets. So very much the doing more with less, um, doing less with less, doing the same with less. Um, so how can you actually evidence where you've done this before, where you've successfully uh, reimagined services? It's good as well if you can take proposals to clients and uh, potential clients before they come to the market. 
because once they come to the market with, with the tender, there's a lot less opportunity to actually influence the shape of what they're asking for, the commercial pricing arrangements that they're looking for, et cetera. And there can sometimes be the temptation at the buyer end of things, it, they're under a lot of pressure as well, to more or less just reissue what got issued the last time this contract went out to tender. But we're in a very different world now. So we actually recommend, we have a service at AMBID called a strategic briefing paper. And this is where you can submit into your clients or your target clients before something comes out to the market, whether it's a brand new tender or a retender of existing uh, services. Uh, this strategic briefing paper helps to position where the market's at, what sort of things uh, that the buyers are perhaps going to be taking into account, and even some suggestions that, that you can make about potential ways that services could be re-engineered perhaps uh, in, in ways that are more effective and perhaps more targeted at the budgets that they have available or the type of service that consumers are looking for now as well. So bit trend number two is resilience, business resilience. So we're in a recession, really. We're expecting sort of official confirmation of that very soon. But I think we all know that is the reality of what we're in at the moment. Um, economists are telling us that for the UK, it's likely to last throughout 2023. Well, that may be the case, none of us know for sure. But one thing we do know, those of us who are old enough to remember previous recessions, is there will certainly be many business failures. So a business failure is extremely costly to the public sector because they are going to, in many cases, have to re-procure. Before they can do that, they're maybe going to have to actually get the services from another provider, but under more emergency type arrangements. And what happens then often is that prices go up. I think one local authority organisation had to pay out about £10 million more following the failure of a large construction sector client uh, uh, bidder a few years ago. So no public sector buyer wants to be holding the baby, as it were, on a failed supplier. So um, they will be putting more scrutiny into the business resilience. They're going to want to understand your business resilience arrangements. They're going to perhaps scrutinize your accounts a bit more. They're also going to be taking a pretty close look at your credit rating as well. And we're actually seeing some evidence just in the last month or two of increased scrutiny on these areas. So be prepared to um, have your story ready. Um, it's also a good time to make sure that you've got the necessary facilities um, to ensure that you've got sufficient working capital as well. Um, equally as well, we're, we're noticing that there are a number of bidders who are actually looking to increase the amount of public sector business they're doing, being as this is a client who generally is, is good for payments and they are paying uh, generally within 30 days or less as well. So very important as well to make sure that you do have a good amount of public sector contracts, especially if you think your private sector customers might be spending less uh, than, than normal due to the recession situation. Bit trend number three is the procurement bill of 2022. Now, we know that this uh, procurement bill is actually um, passing through um, legislation at the moment. It's been in the House of Lords. There's been various amendments. It's coming back to the House of Commons. It's likely to become law around the summer or early autumn. There's quite a number of changes 
There's basically a simplification of the procurement regime. There are several hundred um, laws affecting procurement, and these are going to be brought together in this new procurement um, bill. There's going to be a move to most advantageous tender, uh, or MAT, rather than just meat. Uh, the most economically advantageous tender. And that's go also going to allow authorities to give increased weight to factors other than price. So, for example, things like social value, uh, including sustainability as well. Now, a House of Lords amendment brought the NHS within the definition of a public authority for this legislation. It wasn't originally envisaged that the NHS would come within it, but looking like it might. But note, though, that this legislation will only apply to England, Wales and Northern Ireland. So this procurement bill will not apply at all in uh, Scotland. Although obviously Scottish based uh, companies need to take it into account when they are bidding to organisations elsewhere in the UK. Bid trend number four for 2023, no surprise, is sustainability. Greenwashing is uh, now being sniffed out and being probed uh, within public sector procurement. A few years ago, it would have been sufficient to have said you'd put in some LED lights, you were exploring the use perhaps of electric vehicles, uh, things like that. You had ISO 14001, which is very important as well, the environmental management standard, but now a lot more is required. So the public sector have got a carbon a, a reduction plan, they've got a template for that, and many public sector organisations are looking for bidders to actually have completed the carbon reduction plan template, and that includes publishing it on their own website as well, the bidder to publish that on their own website. It's also really important that you understand your baseline position. What is your current carbon footprint and what is your journey to net zero? When are you going to have as a business achieve net zero? So, for example, um, the UK government has committed the UK to getting to net zero by 2050, the Scottish government by 2045. But a number of public sector organisations and organisations that are pretty close to the public sector, they've set net zero targets much earlier than that, you know, 2030, even 2028 in some cases. So as a business bidding to the public sector, what is your own net zero target? And what are the milestones along the way to reaching it? What are your actual deliverables? So very important, you're not just exploring more sustainable ways of delivering your goods, uh, services and works, but that you're actually delivering on that, that you've got achievements from sustainability related achievements that you can point to and that you're measuring the impact of what you do what you're using, and even into your supply chain as well. A bit trend number five is B Corp. Are you familiar with B Corp? There's now over 1,000 certified B Corps in the UK. So B Corps uh, positively impact all the stakeholders. They are businesses that they've looked at what they're doing and how it's impacting their workers, the communities that they are working within, their customers, and also importantly, the planet. So basically, people and planet are just as important, if not more important, than profit. But obviously, B Corps generally want to make a profit as well. But this is... a an ethical profit 
Um, so B Corps actually are private sector businesses that would be pretty much aligned with the values that are in the public sector. So B Corps uh, achieving that uh, certification could also be a way to differentiate yourself from the competition. With over a thousand B Corps now in the UK, it's something that's obviously on the rise, but could your organisation be one of the first perhaps in your sector? Could you be an early uh, uh, adopter of B Corp? It'd be interesting to see how this um, plays out over the next few years. I would expect to see quite a lot more organisations becoming B Corps, and it'll be interesting to see how these score within the evaluation methodologies that the public sector adopt. Bit trend number six is cybersecurity. Now, cybersecurity has been around for a while. There's no doubt about that. But this is something that is of increasing importance to not just the public sector, but also the private sector as well. Many clients are ramping up their IT and data security expectations. They don't want to be the subject of, you know, data breaches. They oftentimes, and you know, on a public sector contract, there is sensitive information. There's personal information about uh, that their customers that has to be passed on to their suppliers to actually deliver deliver the uh, services to them. So therefore, bidders that can move up the data security ladder from just cyber essentials up to cyber essentials plus, which is an external accreditation of your uh, data security arrangements to ISO 27001 information security management. Well, again, this could be something that could help to differentiate you from other bidders. I actually believe that over the next few years, ISO 27001 is going to become a bit like ISO 9001. It's going to be something that, generally speaking, the public sector are going to look for that level of protection or at least something that can give them an equivalent assurance. Bid trend number seven for 2023, I think, is the political landscape. Clients and bidders alike are going to have one eye on the opinion polls, given that there's now only two years or, or less before the next UK general election. Now, polls are currently showing that um, the Labour Party, for example, appears to have a significant lead. Now, if there is a change of government, then some sectors may undergo fairly significant changes. So it's worth scrutinising the change control provision of long-term contracts, particularly if certain services or sectors look to be targets that might be brought more within state control or more direct control. So this might be something that as you scrutinise what's coming to the market, you may want to provide yourself some reassurance by asking uh, carefully targeted clarification questions that perhaps deal with this. Bit trend number eight is labour shortages. So rather unusually, we're in the situation where we've got to some extent, an economic recession, but that's side by side, at least at the moment, with labour shortages in many different sectors. So how will any new contract you win be resourced? How responsive is your business to new ways of working and not mandating, for example, that everything's got to be done by people turning up at a fixed place of employment for fixed hours, five days a week, for example. How responsive are you to these new ways of working? What innovative ways 
do you have to encourage recruitment, including of the over 50s? Because particularly in the last few years since COVID, substantially more over 50s have quit the labour market. Could you tempt some of them back in? Also, do you understand Generation Z? That's the people sort of 25 and under. And what makes young people tick? What are they looking for? What attracts them to an employer or a workplace? Or conversely, what puts them off? Bit trend number nine is technology. How quickly is your organisation keeping up with new and emerging technologies? For example, are you deploying artificial intelligence in your work? How are you using data analytics and insights in your contract delivery and to add real value for your clients? Are you getting to a stage where you can use data to be predictive, to be proactive, to be less reactive? Then if you can evidence that, that's going to serve you well for your 2023 bids. With technology also, what about clean tech and sustainable tech? Blockchain, if applicable in your sector, and IoT, the Internet of Things. Bid trend number 10 for 2023 is bid consultancy. An increasing number of bidders are now recognising the benefits that can come from external specialist bidding assistance. So this can take the form of upskilling your own uh, bid staff. It can take the form of being uh, valuable external uh, advice, a critical friend almost, who can look over your bids and identify some areas that they can be uh, improved in. Many bids are won or lost on just small percentages. So getting external help to close that gap, to take you over the winning line can be very good. Bid consultancy can cover all areas of bidding, whether it's bid writing, bid management, bid strategy, bid process, bid training, bid recruitment, providing interim bid staff. There are all, all manner of help available. I would say to look for consultants that are APMP qualified. That's the Association of Proposal Management Professionals. That's the bid world's professional membership and certification body. So that gives you some assurance that your bid specialist has actually reached an externally accredited standard. Some bidders are also seeing the benefits of hiring graduates or people with the right attitude and some of the core bid attributes, and then providing them with structured training. For example, through the Ultimate Tender Coach. Have you seen the Ultimate Tender Coach's website and the training that's available there? It's three-year access to 25 hours of video training and a weekly support call for the first 12 months. Take a look. It could be just right for your business. So to keep up to date with public sector bid trends, please connect with me on LinkedIn and follow the AM Bid and the Ultimate Tender Coach company pages on LinkedIn. We've also got an AM Bid YouTube channel and a monthly Bidding Insights newsletter that you can join the distribution list for. I hope you've enjoyed my 2023 Bid Trends broadcast, found it thought-provoking. And watch out for plenty more LinkedIn Lives from me and AM Bid during 2023.